Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my banana plants here. So it's actually only been six weeks since I filmed the last update and the plants have been growing really really quickly. In fact they've grown so fast that I can't film them in my usual filming location so I've had to find some space somewhere else in the house so the lighting and the sound might be a little bit different in this video. But they've all done really well apart from two of the plants which have been struggling a little bit. I've also got four new plants to introduce you to today. Uh, I've got two new Enceti Ventricosum seeds that germinated just about a week ago. The other two Enceti Ventricosums which are these two at the back here, they germinated about 12 weeks ago and these two at the front just germinated recently. Then I'd also bought two more plants, I couldn't resist getting some more. So I got an Enceti Ventricosum Morellii, which is a really lovely red leaf variety of the Enceti Ventricosum. And then I also got a new Musa Bazoo, because my current Musa Bazoo looked like it was maybe going to die, I just wasn't doing well, I don't know what's wrong with it. So I've got a replacement just in case, but actually my Musa Bazoo is starting to show signs of a bit more recovery now, so I might just end up with two Musa Bazoos. So I'll go through almost every single plant and show you how they're doing. The growth has been, as I say, really quite exceptional. These plants are only 12 weeks old now and if, as, as I showed you the photos from just the last update, which was six weeks ago, the growth has definitely been exponential. Basically, the bigger the plant gets, the more leaves it has, the more leaves it has, the more photosynthesis it can carry out through absorbing light from the sun and then it can grow faster because of that. So the growth should continue to be exponential. Also, as we're coming into summer now, the light level is getting really good here in Scotland. I'm starting to grow some of these now in my conservatory and that's also helping because the high light levels, high temperatures are really starting to help out the plants. So I'll start off with all my Enceti Ventricosum banana plants. So these are the Enceti Ventricosum plants. Basically, Enceti Ventricosum isn't a, a true hardy banana. It likes cool conditions because it comes from the highlands of Ethiopia and other high altitude areas of Africa. But it can't take hard frost, so this has to be stored inside during the winter time. But it's a much faster growing banana than my other ones, which are a Musa genus. The Musa genus, um, they tend to be a little bit slower growing. These Ensetis are incredibly fast growing, these Ensetis ventricosum. And I've got two different varieties now. So all the green plants are Ensetis ventricosum large seed variety. So these ones grow a lot larger than your average Ensetis ventricosums. The seeds are particularly a lot larger, about three or four times the size. And the plants themselves are also a bit bigger as well. So we're going to have very rapid growth. They are mostly green plants, but they're starting to get, show a little bit of red uh, coloration already. I'll give you a close-up of that now. So with the higher light levels and, um, and also with the plant becoming more mature, it's getting these lovely red color on the stems there or on, on the leaf petioles. These, uh, this is what it will look like eventually when it's mature. Basically, the whole leaf petiole, as it goes all the way up to the top of the leaf, will be covered in these lovely bright red stripes. The rest of the plant will be completely green. And that's what it looks like when this becomes mature. Also, we're getting a lot thicker base now. With the Enceti bananas, they don't tend to grow the very tall stem that you get on a normal banana tree. Most of their height actually comes through the leaf stems. So you can see here, most of the leaves separate quite low down and you've got this small fat trunk. And then the leaves have a very long leaf stem and then that, well, that's what really what gives it the height. So you don't really get that long, thin stem that you do in other bananas, but it has a much wider appearance, a much uh, lower appearance as well but you get these much bigger leaves, and these leaves eventually will become absolutely huge. You can see already this new one starting to come out on the top of this one over here is much bigger than the previous ones. Basically, as the bananas are sizing up and getting more mature, every leaf is getting larger, but with the Enceti Ventricrosums, we could get leaves up to four to six meters long eventually. They can get really giant leaves. That's what gives them the height, and this one's really starting to take off now. The one on the right was a little bit further behind, it's, it's probably about two weeks younger, something like that. Also had that under time-lapse cameras, so I didn't have that in the perfect growing condition, which is why it's a bit smaller now. Both of these plants have been in the conservatory probably for about four or five weeks now. Didn't have enough space because they got so big in the grow box, so they've been out in the, in the uh, sunnier conditions of the conservatory. Then we had some unusual cold uh, weather in most of April. And what that's caused is the night temperatures to be quite a lot lower and even some of the day temperatures to be low in the conservatory. So they did slow down for a little bit, but just in the last week or so we've had a lot sunnier weather. That sun's really been heating up the conservatory up to about 30 to 35 degrees and these have been growing much faster because of that. My biggest issue with these is going to be trying to find space for them before I plant them out. Because I'm in North Scotland and these don't like frosts, I have to really wait till end of May, probably the beginning of June before I can plant them outside. Also we get bad storms at this time of year, so I need to wait for the worst of the winds to go, otherwise these will be destroyed by the strong winds. The large tropical leaves are really designed for an environment with lots of rainfall, 
and not very much wind because near the equator you don't tend to get many storms at all so these aren't really designed for strong winds so I need to really wait until we get some calmer weather and Scotland is one of the windiest countries in the world so that's always quite a big issue up here. The only other thing I've noticed with these bananas is they really don't like feed. I know a lot of places say bananas are very hungry feeders. I think they are hungry feeders but the problem is these are growing so rapidly and I'm planting them in compost which is supposed to give six months slow supply of feed what's happening is I, I have to repot these probably every four weeks and because they're constantly in brand new compost and it's really rich feed in the compost if I give them any extra feed it just it becomes too much and they start to get burned so you can see some burn on the edge of some of these leaves particularly this one here at the back just along the edge there starting to get some chemical burn so I've stopped feeding all my bananas for now so of the Inseti ventricosums there's two new ones these two uh, just appeared probably about a week or so ago as you can see they're still quite young uh, they're only about a week old so they've just got their first leaf and because this is a large seed variety the, uh, the bananas start off with quite big leaves and they start going quite fast these leaves are much much bigger than any of the Musa sequences that I grew earlier this year the Musa sequences were about a, a, probably a fifth or a quarter of the size of the leaf because the seeds are so much smaller so the Inseti ventricosum particularly the large seed variety has a really good head start and then it just keeps growing rapidly from then on these plants are probably about 11 or 10 weeks behind those ones so you can imagine in 10 or 11 weeks time they're going to be that size so that gives you an indication of how quickly they grow. These ones when I plant them out in about 6 weeks time they're going to be absolute giants. These two small ones won't be too big. The really big ones I've got some lovely big uh, whiskey barrel planters that I'm going to put them in. I think they'll do nice at my front door where it's sheltered and they get plenty of sunlight. These two I'm not sure. I might plant them up in the bed somewhere or if, it's, if I can find a shelter spot in my parents garden I might plant them there. So with my new obsession with banana plants, especially Inseti ventricosums, I couldn't help myself but get a Inseti um, ventricosum morellii. This is known as the red obsidian banana. Basically it's a cultivated form which instead of just having that red midrib, it has a lot of red coloration on the leaves. And uh, I really love this kind of mottled green and bronze in colour. It's really nice. Um, sometimes though if you have a lot of sunlight the whole thing will go completely red. It just depends how much sun it gets and the environment it's living in depends how much green, how much red you get. This is quite a young plant. Now I did notice this is a much more squat than mine. That might be partly because I've got the large seed variety. The large seed variety seems to be a little bit leggier. But also this has probably been growing its whole life under high light conditions. Mine have been growing in Scotland in lower light conditions. That's why they're a bit leggier. And that's why these are slightly shorter, these little leaf petioles here, because it's uh, had more light level, so it doesn't need to grow as, as tall. And also the leaves are a little bit wider, which is probably also due to the, uh, the higher light levels. But it's really nice color. It will grow just a tiny bit smaller, maybe a tiny bit slower than these other two, but I'm not too sure, but that's what I'm expecting anyway. And uh, it will just give a really lovely color, because as I say, this red color looks really nice. So that's Inseti ventricosum morellii. This is probably a much more common variety that's grown in gardens. When most people buy, uh, buy or grow Inseti ventricosums, it tends to be this variety just because it has a much nicer colour of the leaves. It's much more ornamental, really nice look to it. When it comes to the wild variety, it's much more like these. So in the wild or in Ethiopia where they grow them for, for food, these are much more like what they are seen in the wild. They don't normally have red leaves, they have green leaves with a lovely red midrib along the leaf and uh, so they're quite different looking plants but they are technically the same species. So the banana I've got the most of at the moment is the Musa sequimensis. This one I grew from seed but the germination rate was much much better. The Inseti ventricosum as I say only had two seeds germinate originally and then, and then a couple of months later I had those other two grow but these ones all pretty much grew in the same week and it's interesting to see there's quite a bit of variation in them and I don't think it's so much to do with uh, the growing environment because all of them apart from the one in the pink pot have been growing in exactly the same growing conditions and, um, the, and they've been repotted at the same time so they've all had the same treatment but for some reason they're growing slightly differently so I reckon it's probably some kind of genetic variation which you would expect to get with seed grown plants especially if these seeds were collected from somewhere that might have had other bananas growing nearby even other species that might have cross pollinated but I do think these Musa sequimensis plants I don't think they're any kind of hybrid between anything else because it was a, a good seed catalogue I got it from so it should be Musa sequimensis and not some kind of hybrid with another Musa species so I'll show you the two smallest ones one of them looks like it might be growing in a dwarf form the other one I think is just stunted and not too healthy so these are the two smallest plants uh, I'll show you the, uh, the stunted one first this one as you can see is a bit of a yellow colour 
It's the smallest out of all my plants and there's a little bit of scorch on the leaves. I'm not sure what that's from. It could be from the compost because it's not growing as quickly. It's not using the feed as fast. It might be getting a little bit of fertilizer burn. I'm not too sure why that one's got scorched. But generally it's been a lot slower growing than the other plants. It's got a really yellow kind of color to it. I repotted it recently and it has got a little bit more color again but generally it's just looking quite unhealthy. So I'll see how this does. It might recover or it might always be an unhealthy yellow kind of plant. I'm not too sure why. It could be a disease or it could be a genetic abnormality. But I'll, I'll give it the best treatment I can and see how it recovers. And as with all these um, Musa Cicamensis plants, apart from one in the pink pot, they've all been in my grow box, with, low, with um, which has the slightly lower light levels than my other grow box, but still pretty good light levels and around 20 degrees constantly. So these have been in a perfect growing environment. So most of them are really healthy, apart from that yellow one, which is a bit strange. So this is the one that's taken on some kind of like a dwarf characteristic. When this grows new leaves, they're not much taller than the last. They tend to be all bunched up together. You can see here, it was getting height, like the other bananas have been getting with every new leaf. And then for some reason, it stopped doing that or reduced the amount that it, of the height it was getting. And it's now keeping them quite close to each other. So it seems to be more of a dwarf variety. Also, the leaf size isn't that much smaller than the other ones. It is smaller but not massively, and the leaves tend to be a bit wider. There's also a nice little red vein starting to appear on this, although the red vein is, is quite common, uh, a small red vein in Musa Cicamensis. Also, Musa Cicamensis quite often has white red stripes that start to appear on some of the younger foliage. I don't have any of them so in those red stripes. There's quite a few cultivated varieties which have that red stripe more prominent. Uh, they're not normally grown from seed, they're normally grown from clone cuttings or offshoots. Um, but th so these ones don't have any genetics for red stripes, but they still have the possibility that they might have some kind of red coloration because that is more common on uh, Musa Cicamensis than some of the other bananas. You can also see it quite often with a, a dwarf cavendish, just gives it a nice bit of uh, interest as well. It's more of a bronzy colour, not quite the same as the Insetti Ventricosa morellii. The colour's not too dissimilar, but it's more blotchy instead of that kind of grading in and out as it does with that. It's, it's more just defined. But the nice thing with Musa cicamensis is it has really dark leaves, uh, much darker than Bazoo anyway. Musa Bazoo tends to have lighter leaves, and Musa cicamensis has really nice dark leaves. And this one, it should be hardy. It's, it's claimed, some people claim it's as hardy as Musa Bazoo, which is supposed to be the hardiest variety. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see if it is as hardy as that. But it should hopefully survive my winters as long as I give it a really good mulch. I don't know if I'll be able to keep the stems alive, but at least if they can keep the root and the corm alive, then it'll come back every year from the ground. So this Musa Cicamensis has been in a slightly different growing environment. Originally this was the largest out of all the Musa Cicamensis plants, so I actually moved it out first into my conservatory because it was getting too large for the grow box. I was quite short of space. So I moved out to the conservatory and the much higher light levels it really didn't like. It got a lot of scorch on its leaves. But the new leaves have come through now and they're much more tolerant of the light levels, so they're not sowing too many issues. One leaf was completely burnt off and crisped. Uh, this one got quite a lot of damage. You can see this one here has probably got some of the worst damage from the scorch. It's really quite badly damaged there. And as the new leaves came out, they got more resistant to it. And now they're pretty much coming through with very little damage at all from the strong sunshine. And I need to do this process with all the plants, hopefully a little bit slower so I don't get as much scorch as I did with this one, because it did set it back slightly. Also, it was slightly colder in the conservatory when we had that particularly cold spell at the beginning of April. That also slowed it down. So although this was by far the largest out of all the Cicamensis seedlings, it's now about on par with the other two at the back. Maybe slightly taller, but certainly leaf-wise, the leaves are actually slightly smaller now. You can see here the new leaves coming through are not a huge amount bigger than the old ones because it was set back by that scorch on the leaves and the colder temperatures. So it's just now becoming more in line with the other two. This one does seem quite a tall one though. You can see it's put on a long thin stem. The, uh, the new leaves are a bit, bit closer together. That's uh, probably because it's getting a bit more mature now and also because the highlight levels. But generally, it shot up really fast, really quite tall, skinny stem. And the two at the back are more like that. Not quite as skinny as this one, but it's certainly getting a lot more height. And I'll need to go through that process with all the plants eventually of hardening them off, getting them ready for the outside environment, give them high light levels, lower temperatures, and probably putting them under a fan so they get used to the wind. So when they do go outside, they don't just lose all their leaves and have to start again from scratch. So these Musa Cicamensis plants are probably the best ones at the moment. They've got really big leaves. They're sizing up really quickly as well. Every new leaf is much bigger than the last. You can see here, as they've been coming up, they've just been getting larger and larger. And so they're really doing quite well that they can constantly put out large leaves. They're also a good height as well. And you can see with every new leaf, it's a decent amount higher than the last. So they're increasing the height, also their stem thickness is increasing as well. 
generally they're just growing really nicely. And they've also got a really lovely dark green colour to the leaves. As I say, this is more natural as Musa C. commences to have slightly darker green leaves than, than Musa Bazoo. But these ones are particularly dark green at the moment. It's looking really nice and healthy and I'm uh, just really happy with these two plants. So these two I'm expecting to become the largest soon. I will have to put them in the conservatory and start hardening them off soon so they will slow down a bit. But hopefully by the time I put them in the conservatory and hit them outside we have warmer weather and then the only real shot they're going to get is, is highlight levels and not so much shock from the colder temperatures. I'm really looking forward to growing the Cicamentus in my garden. I think it's got the most potential out of all the plants because it's got the hardiness of the bazoo banana but then it also has the ability to grow in slightly cooler conditions. And because our summer's here the average maximum in the middle of summer is about 18 degrees celsius. It's really quite a cold environment for banana trees and he's something that can still keep growing even in colder cloudier weather and hopefully these ones will do well in that but also they have that hardiness that the Musa Bazoo has. So these are my two Musa Bazoo plants. These are probably the best known hardy banana there is. It's uh, very well known, probably the most cultivated hardy banana as well. It can survive surprisingly low temperatures down to minus 10, minus 15, possibly even colder if you mulch the ground nicely and it's got quite rapid growth. It does like slightly higher temperatures in the Cicamensis or the Incetiventicosum but, but I know it can grow quite well in South England and in the European continent. I think it will probably struggle a bit in my garden, so it will be a bit of a challenge. All these bananas, to be honest, will be a bit of a challenge. Being in Scotland, it's a bit cold for them, but it'll be interesting to see how they do. These two, as I say, the one on the right is one I bought about the same time as I had my seeds germinate from my other banana of a species. But uh, this was quite a small plant, and it's just always suffered. I think it's too much feed in the compost. I don't want to disturb the roots and uh, we pot it into a new compost now. So I've just been waiting for it to absorb the excess nutrients and hopefully start to recover. It's really been suffering a lot, loads of scorch in the leaves. The most recent leaf, however, looks a little better. There is a little bit of scorch on the side here, but it's not looking anywhere near as bad as, it, as the other one did when they came through. In fact, this leaf at the top here is so badly scorched, there's barely any uh, green material on it at all. I have been very carefully checking the roots, and it's got a lot of new root growth coming on it. It's looking quite healthy, the new roots coming through, and it's filling the pot well. So it might well recover, we'll see how it does. If it does struggle and stops putting out new leaves at the top, what I'll do is I cut it down to the ground level and let it regrow from the base and uh, kind of reset the plant to see how that does. Um, but at the moment I'm just leaving it as it is. I don't want to take off any of the leaves until they're completely brown just because there's not much green surface left on any of the plant. I want to have as much green surface as possible so it can carry out photosynthesis, build up its energy to produce a better root system and grow it, its leaves. But generally it's starting to recover but as you can see from the previous update it hasn't grown a huge amount. All these other plants are more than doubled in size, probably quadruples in size. This one's only put on about a third more growth so it's quite slow, not doing too well. We'll see how it does um, but I'm not too hopeful for it at the moment. And that's why I bought myself a new Moussa Bajou because I know they grow fast and this one will easily catch up with that in probably three or four weeks. So this is the new Moussa Bajou plant. I only got it a couple of days ago at the same time as the as the Ancetti morellii. This one should grow quite rapidly. You can see as it's been growing in the nursery where it was, every new leaf is much bigger than the last. So it's a healthy plant, it's doing well. There isn't too much damage in any of the leaves, especially when you consider this has been through the postal system. So we'll see how it does. It's in quite a big pot at the moment, so it doesn't need repotting for quite a long time. And it looks like it was recently repotted, so I'll probably keep it in this pot. Both these plants are currently in the conservatory. This Musa Bazoo has been in the um, conservatory probably for about five or six weeks now. And it hasn't got too much leaf scorch from the sun. It, it's just constantly that, uh, that scorch, I think, probably from fertilizer burn. But I'll keep them both in the conservatory and see how they do. As I say, hopefully this new one will grow quite rapidly. It won't have any of this kind of stunting issue that this one on the right has. And it'll quickly catch up with my other banana plants. So it'll be a decent size by the time I plant it. I really need to get the plants up to a good size because once they do grow out in the garden, it'll be quite late in the year. It'll probably be June time because I have to wait that long for the weather to be suitable. And because our summers are so cool, the growth will be quite slow. So I need to get them to size up as quickly as possible. So that's why I'm going to grow them in the conservatory with optimum light levels and heat levels to get them really nice large plants. So hopefully even with slow growth over the, over the summer, I'll get a large plant by the end of the summer. And if it's big enough, then it will survive the winter. If, it, if I don't get the root system large enough, there's a risk that they will, they will get killed off by the frost. So I'm really wanting to get these plants up to a decent size so they can survive the frost. Now when it comes to the Insetti venticosum, they aren't frost hardy so I will have to take them inside and I'll just dry store them. They have these large carbohydrate rich stems that's full of water and those stems can survive uh, dry without sunshine or roots. As long as it's kept cool and not too hot and not frosty then they will survive over winter so I'll be dry storing them. The other banana plants I'm hoping just to mulch and cut down 
and they'll hopefully survive outside. So that's all for this update. It just seems to work out every six weeks I do this update. I haven't really been timing it for six weeks, but that just seems to be a, a good point. When the bananas have had enough growth that it's a good point to do another update. And it just so happens in six weeks time, it's going to be June, so that's going to be a perfect time to plant them out. And so it'll probably be another six weeks until the next update. Before that though, I need to do some repotting. I'm actually going to repot my largest Incentive Entercoaster on the left here. I'll repot that today, because that's definitely already needing a larger pot. I've recently repotted a couple of my Seacomensis, so they're fine. But I'll need to repot these two seedlings quite soon. They don't last long in a 9cm pot because they grow so fast. They'll be repotting in about a week's time. And my three largest Seacomensis, I'll probably repot them in about two weeks' time, because they're growing so quickly at the moment. Although they were only repotted about one or two weeks ago, they're growing that quickly that they'll easily re outgrow that pot really quite fast. In fact, these two here, uh, we repotted only two weeks ago. They were not much, uh, they were just about the same size as this one over here, just about two or three weeks ago. So that gives an indication of how fast these plants are growing. I'll probably run out of space soon if I'm not careful. At the moment, as I say, um, the Musa C are all in the grow box, the rest of the plants are in the conservatory. I'm gonna to have to put the Musa C into the conservatory soon, partly because of si size restraints, because they're getting too big for the grow box but also because I want them to get used to highlight levels so they can survive outdoors. So I'll see how it goes. Um, I am quite limited to space in the conservatory at the moment, which is why I'm not filming there, because it's just absolutely filled with plants. Um, but once the weather warms up and I can start using the greenhouse and move some of the other plants outside, then I'll hopefully get more space for my banana plants. I'm expecting these to be really quite huge. The Incentive Entercosum on the left there, those two largest plants, I think they could be getting close to over a meter in height. They're not far off it now, but um, when the leaves first come out, they're about a meter high, as you can see this one up here, and then they kind of curve over and flop down. So when they first have a new leaf coming out, it's probably about a meter high, and then it curves down to only about two foot. So I think actually the curved down leaves will be a meter high, and the, the tallest new leaves will actually be almost a meter and a half. So it's interesting to see how fast they're growing. Really rapid growth. As I say, a bit of repotting, plenty more light, lots more heat. I think these will be really quite large by the time I plant them out in June.